This is the first implementation of programming for us in Africa. Um, and of course, this is an absolutely uh, exciting and historic time uh, to be involved in anything in Sudan as uh, we've been, anybody, anybody who's seen the news in the last couple of weeks has realized uh, there's been the, the vote for the referendum going on for the possibility of a, of a separation between North and South. So a, a very uh, pregnant uh, political and historical moment in, in the, in the uh, country at the moment. So we entered in February. Um, and deployed a program team to an area called, a uh, state called Western Equatoria, uh, which is in the uh, southwest corner of, of South Sudan, um, and started our programming there with a team of 10. We have four international civilian peacekeepers and six national civilian peacekeepers who were tasked to get things started. Um, and for anybody who understands our work, it is based very much on trust, and relationship building, um, acceptance um, in the community amongst the actors, the police, the military, the uh, in our case, the traditional chiefs, the leadership, the government structures, um, uh, the community members themselves, um, the other international um, organizations who may or may not be around. So the process of us entering a community is, is um, slow and patient work. Um, and what we found was the welcome in um, South Sudan so far has been very, very strong. Uh, this is a, a, an area where there seems to be an, an inherent cultural connection, um, a click more, more or less between the type of work that we do, which is um, very much based on as those elements I'm talking about, relationships and, and conversation and dialogue and, and, and um, working things out in that manner, um, and, the, and the culture of the people that we're working with, our colleagues in South Sudan. So there's a great willingness amongst people who say, you know what, we've had enough. We've had decades of war, we've suffered, we're looking, and we need help. We, we, we recognize we need help and we, we, we understand what you're doing and we want you to be here. So it's been a good start. Um, and so through relationship building, it was very soon that our team was doing things like this that you see on the screen, um, which we call our Indiana Jones style activity. Uh, South Sudan is one of the least developed and one of the poorest areas in the world. And a lot of our travel looks not much different than this um, to get to areas where we've been called upon to intervene in rising tensions around cattle disputes. And uh, people hear cattle, 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 you know, this is what we talk about a lot. Cattle conflict in South Sudan is economic, it's political, and it's cultural. It's a representation of, of almost all aspects of life. So what we, we quickly describe as cattle raiding or cattle conflict has very deep, nuanced, complex uh, roots and reach within the community. So we've been, our team is working in an area that is, uh, faces a lot of friction between pastoralists and agriculturalists um, and have been working, which has broader political implications um, that is different representations from tribal group, different tribal groups, um, and distribution and sharing of power and economic resources. So they've been working with the community on a stabilization mechanism where they are, are trying to be proactive with communities to help predict the, the pattern of conflict that happens and stabilize, reduce rising tensions. And we've done the, the gamut of being called in to um, help facilitate dialogue in situations where literally two tribes were ready, armed, on stand, uh, waiting for the nod from their chiefs to go, with the military on standby to go and intervene if that happened, uh, to working in um, communities that are suffering from school violence. So there's a lot of violence that we've seen at the intertribal level. There's frequent displacement, and that tends to spill over into the schools. Uh, we are looking at communities who are dealing with, the, a lot of them are having very new experiences around democracy, elections, preparing, as we know, last April there was a national election, um, which created an opportunity to participate in public life, but had a very predictable um, knock-on effect, which was um, violence and conflict that came from, from how did, how did that, that play out, the build-up to the referendum. Um, there, 
We're, the area that we work in is affected by um, LRA activity, and that we have displaced communities um, that have moved around uh, Western Equatoria and have displaced and re-displaced. And they have come to us and asked them to help them with some security concerns that they have in areas that they've had to displace to, and then how to reintegrate back to their home communities. Um, around the referendum, We've done a lot of interesting things, um, which started in November uh, quite actively monitoring the registration process. So we spent our teams, uh, our team out in, in the, the Western Equatoria, Greater Mundri area, and in Juba, were monitoring the referendum centers and observing how the process was going, speaking to people, um, and particularly in Western Equatoria, helping facilitate some of the, the confusion um, and tensions that were rising because people just were misinformed, connecting them with, with different options and different actors. And this is from the, one of the displaced communities that we work with. One of the things that we've really noticed is that there are, um, there are big gaps, as, as we said. This is a, a, a place where people are experiencing a, go a functioning government for the first time in, in decades and, and decades, and so, one of the things that we try and do is help um, connect the communities with the state structures. Uh, communities often don't actually know what the government is supposed to do to support civilians, um, and the government is so under-resourced um, and, and just fledgling that they don't often have the possibility to, to get the information they need from the communities. So we work with the police and we work with the, the commissioners in each county and their structures within and the communities themselves to try and connect them so that that is strengthening and it's a, sustain, a sustainable process through which everybody feels more secure and safe along the way. And what we've seen is a real appetite for growth. There are 10 states in southern Sudan. We have received requests to move into eight of them so far. And those requests have come from the Ministry for Peace and CPA Implementation, the Ministry for Disaster Management, uh, the uh, Bureau uh, for Small Arms Control and Community Security, and the SSRRC, the Reconstruction and Rehabilitation Commission, the South Sudan Reconstruction and Rehabilitation Commission. So there's, there's a, an appetite for community protection and the protection of civilians and support in that process. Our plans in, and for expansion are ambitious and on the way. Uh, we are, the most immediate plans we have are to open an additional team in the western part of Western Equatoria, which is the, an area called Nzara, which is on the border of the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, famous, of course, for LRA activity. And this is, will be a child protection project, so really building on that institutional expertise Florington was referring to um, from the work that we did in Sri Lanka, dealing with reintegration and return of former combatants, protection against abduction and recruitment um, into to, to various armed groups and armed forces. Following along that, um, we are looking at deploying civilian peacekeeping teams along the flashpoints of the north-south border. So we're looking at, for those of you familiar with the map, Unity State, Northern Bar Gazelle to start with, followed on by War Up and Upper Nile, which would give us full coverage along the border. And what we are hearing from the people there is they need civilian protection support at that area. There are flashpoints, there are trade routes, there's markets, uh, the, there's a vulnerability to a humanitarian crisis that is very strong. Um, and from both the donor community within southern Sudan and the government structure, they've proactively approached us and said, would you be able to take this on? Would you be able to help us with this? So we are looking at a very dynamic and exciting 2011 as we grow and watch the newest state in the world appears, that seems to be on 98, 99% sure, to be born um, in, the, in the next few months. So thank you very much. I will be happy to chat with anybody who would like to know more about the work we're doing in Sudan when we finish here.